Jackie, do you have an eight? <laughs> it's time for fun and games here at the Tut household, but it wasn't always that way. A few years back, there were some concerns about son Trevor's problems at school. In class, I would go to sleep just because I guess I was sitting in one place for so long, but uh, at night I was just like really tired. His teachers were saying, you know, he's not focusing, he's falling asleep, his grades are going down, and so we decided, you know, we better see if there's some other problem going on. Trevor's mom, Karen, brought her concerns and Trevor to the Sleep Disorders Center. Here at the Sleep Center, doctors and technicians will begin the process of determining whether or not you have a sleep disorder. Disorders can range from sleep apnea to restless leg syndrome to narcolepsy, as in Trevor's case. Narcolepsy is, is a neurologic condition, in other words, it involves the brain, and basically it's lifelong in duration once it occurs. It occurs a lot of times in teenagers or young adults. And there's a problem basically with this sleep-wake switch. The switch in the brain is very much like a railroad track almost where you're trying to direct a train. And normally we're trying to at night direct our train into the, the sleep tracks or cycle and then during the daytime back to the, the awake cycle. The problem in narcoleptics is that literally that switch, it doesn't seem to function quite as well and it can actually flop back and forth quite a bit. The cause of narcolepsy has been a great medical mystery, but researchers now think they may have found the trigger. The theme that they keep coming back to is a deficiency of a certain protein in the brain called hypocritin. Hypocritin is basically allowing the brain to be more sensitive to the other chemicals that help with promotion of wakefulness. And so if you are deficient in this and it allows the intrusion of sleepiness and possibly even this, this REM, this rapid eye movement sleep to, in, to basically intrude on the wakeful uh, state. Theories on the cause for hypocritin deficiency range from a viral infection that damages a part of the brain to the body's own immune system turning on itself. While the cause is vague, the symptoms are not. In addition to excessive daytime sleepiness, symptoms can include sleep paralysis, being unable to talk or move for a brief period when falling asleep or waking up, hypnagogic hallucinations, vivid sight and sound illusions at the onset of sleep, or even cataplexy, sudden loss of muscle control often triggered by intense emotion. Just check out this video taken during a research study of narcoleptic dogs with cataplexy. One minute they're playful, the next they're partially paralyzed, but still awake. Any of these narcoleptic symptoms can be detected here at the Sleep Disorders Center through two separate studies. An overnight sleep study called a polysomnogram and daytime nap testing or a multiple sleep latency test. Once the diagnosis is made, the first intervention is the education of the patient and family members about what they need to be doing with school, work, other things. Narcolepsy fits under uh, the American with Disabilities Act, for instance. Um, so they're entitled to go and ask the school or special uh, testing facilities for um, exceptions. That allowance has made it possible for narcolepsy patients like Nicholas Ladart to achieve goals he and his parents never thought possible. I never dreamed that Nicholas would go to college because he had so much trouble in school. He got his self-esteem back because you don't have self-esteem when you sleep and everybody's telling you you're sleeping when you're not realizing that. And uh, we're very proud of him. Nicholas also takes advantage of medication that allows narcoleptics to realign their sleep patterns. And Trevor has noticed a big difference since he started his treatment. Especially in my first period class, which is Algebra 2, I would always just fall asleep. I had no clue what was going on. And now I'm awake and I'm actually like listening to a teacher and I understand what she's saying. Because of applying the regimen of medication and lifestyle changes, along with strong family support, Trevor is now even part of the workforce. Oh yes got to pay that car insurance. He's come along just great. He's got a bright future ahead of him. So I'm happy about that. And so is Trevor, now that he's wide awake to the opportunities in his future. For Smart Medicine, I'm Rod Starnes. Joining me now is pulmonologist Dr. Mark Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman, thanks so much for joining us. One of the problems with narcolepsy is it can oftentimes be misdiagnosed, especially in children and teenagers as, as ADD or just plain laziness. Why is this? 
Well, narcolepsy is a disease of the sleep and the wake cycle, and oftentimes the children will be labeled as having attention deficit or hyperactivity or laziness when really those signs and symptoms are really leading to an underlying, underlying sleep disorder. Uh, the, often this goes misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed because the parents or the clinician is not adequately up to speed uh, under, on the underlying diagnosis. What type of support groups are there? Well, there are many, and I always recommend looking, if you're internet savvy, looking on the internet. There's a plethora of great organizations, but the National Sleep Foundation is one, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine is another, as well as some of the local hospitals. What types of medicines are available? There are medications that help control cataplexy, and cataplexy is the unprovoked uh, muscle weakness that can occur with excessive emotional stresses like telling or hearing a joke, laughing or even being angry. Medications, certain antidepressants will be very useful in helping to control the cataplectic attack. Uh, in terms of uh, maintaining the ability to stay alert, certain stimulants will be necessary. And there is another medication called sodium oxabate which helps with symptoms of uh, daytime sleepiness, improve alertness, and improve the symptoms of cataplexy. Dr. Hoffman, thanks so much for joining us. Thank